What's up my peeps, this is Fabulous Fabs again, episode number five. The story's almost ending, I'm sorry. It's just a lot of information. I just need people to know, like, they, if, I got, if I got away from it, you guys can get away from it too. If I live through it, you're going to be able to live through it too. Like, I know at that moment you feel like you're dying. You feel like the whole world is crashing down. And it's, you, you're never going to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you do. You do. And it, it's so much better. The doctor called me. And I had ordered pizza because I love pizza. And I was like, cool, my pizza will be here by the time I wake up. So I call back and I call back and I tell the nurse, like, yeah, I just got a, a missed call from you guys. I said something about my pap smear came up abnormal. And she was like, yes. Um, she's like, yeah, it came back abnormal. We're going to need you to come back for more testing. But it looks like you have HPV. And you might have cancer. And if you do have cancer, like we don't know how severe it is, how advanced it is. Uh, there is treatment for it, but depending on how far advanced you are, you, um, if you do get the treatment, you might not ever be able to have kids. Keep in mind at this time, I'm 21 years old. And she's saying like all these long medical words and like all these like diagnosis and this this and that and i'm like all i can think up is hpv cancer no children what is going on like what the heck is going on like i had previously told you guys chris was my first so i had never had any exams before i had never had anything before chris at that time i was 20 years old and chris was 25 I had never been active and Chris had been active since he was 13. So he had 12 years experience having sex with, you know, multiple partners or whatever the case is. And I was his first, uh, he was my first, but I was like, I don't know what number to him. He never wanted to tell me. So before we had started having sex, for the most part, I'm very responsible in that sense. Or I thought I was. Before we started having sex, I would never let him have sex without a condom um i asked him like have you been checked out like he said yeah no i'm good i just got checked out recently i was like all right cool so i love this guy enough to believe everything that was coming out of his mouth like he said he had gotten tested he said that he was good um i haven't been with anybody so he had nothing to worry about i believed him you know like how is someone who tells you they love you every single day do all these things for you gonna put you in harm's way I, I i couldn't fathom that idea that somebody who supposedly loved me that much would be willing to hurt me in my head i i i didn't think it was possible i didn't think that he would be so selfish and so careless and so such a liar that he would put my life in harm's way you know, so the reason why I got checked up in the first place was because after I had ha started, um, so we were having sex, but we were using protection and stuff like that. Uh, I want to say two weeks after we started having protection uh, sex, I went to the doctor, I set up an appointment and I told them, hey, I just recently started having sex. I want to see what kind of birth control you guys have because I'm not ready to have any kids right now. They were like, oh my God, we're so impressed. Like nobody comes on on their own asking about information. I asked what kind of birth controls they had. They showed me a pamphlet and all this stuff. I got birth control. I felt like I was really being responsible about having sex, you know? And um, yeah, so I, I went ahead, I did that. Everything was good and dandy until we moved in together. And if you keep in mind, we started dating like in February and we moved in together like in March or April. It was really, really fast. And if you are Mexican, <laughs> and you're in a relationship with someone that you live in, you know how Mexicans are. Like, we already live together. Like, I'm your partner for life. Like, we're technically Mexican married. And Mexican married means just being in a relationship where you live with the person, but you're not officially married, but you're not seeing anybody else. Like, this is your partner. And it's serious because you live together. You, it's not just your boyfriend. You live together. That's what Mexican married is, in case you were wondering. But when we got, when we started living together, that's when things changed. That's when he was like, well, now we live together. Now, like, you're like, you're like my wife type of status. Like now we don't need to use protection. And I was all about it because I was like, all right, cool. Like you, I'm using birth control. It's not like I'm gonna get pregnant. And like I said, I trusted him 
um, saying he had got checked up, saying he had done all this, this and that procedures to make sure that I was going to be okay. And he didn't. And one time while we were having sex, I felt like the worst pain ever. I felt like rug burn inside my women parts. I felt like somebody had grabbed tapatio, if you know what this is, and put it all over my woman parts. I felt like I was on fire. I remember telling him, get off of me, get off of me. I'm hurting, I'm hurting. And once again, he was my first. So I didn't know if that was like, maybe he was going too rough. Maybe he was, you know, going too hard on me. We were getting crazy. Like, I wasn't sure if that was normal because he was the only person that I could compare it to. Like, I had no other sex experiences. I had no other experience at all. So I, I thought that was normal. I just thought maybe we just got too crazy that day. And it just didn't feel right. And then when I would pee, it would burn, like almost like a UTI, urinary tract infection for women, if you wanna know what that felt like. Um, that's how I would feel when I would pee. And I was like, what the heck? So I ended up doing my first pap smear and the results that the doctor gave me when she called me was the result of that first pap smear that I had ever, ever had. Then I was just like, what's going on? Like I'm over here trusting this guy and I still don't know what HPV is. I still don't know like the whole logistics of it. I start Googling, I start Wikipedia, everything, you know, everything online and I start mind messing myself. I call my best friend, Jessica, and I, I, I was crying. I was like, the doctor just called me, told me something's wrong with me. I have something called the HPV and I might have cancer, and if I do have cancer, they don't know how serious it is, and and they might be able to give me treatment, but if they give me treatment, then I might not be able to ever have kids. And I'm crying, I'm bawling, and then I hear a knock on my door. And it's my mom. And me and my mom, when I was a teenager, when I was in high school and a little bit after high school, we had a really rough relationship. We would butt heads a lot because we're a lot alike. You know, we're friendly, we're fun, we're outgoing, we're fuck it, we're down, we're YOLO. But we're also hot, head, hot headeds and we're also very stubborn. Like my mom is like, oh, this is red. And I'm like, nah, mom is burgundy. And she's like, no, it's red, you know? And I'm like, no, it's burgundy. I was that one child that was like, no, just because it's red, you say it's red, it's not, it's not red, you know? Like, I was never, I've never been afraid to voice my opinion. I've never been afraid to say how I feel about it. And I'm, I'm very, very honest, too honest sometimes. I hurt a lot of people's feelings. Mom comes knocking at the door and she's like, she's like, Mija, your pizza is here. The pizza guy's outside. And I was like, all right, I'll be out in a second. But I had, I had that crying voice, you know? I was like, I'll be out in a second. And she was like, okay. So I come out, get my pizza. And I was like, I don't want any pizza. I put it in the living room, in the kitchen. And um, I go back into my room and I cry some more, right? I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. How did my life go from being almost perfect to it falling apart, to me not being Mexican married, to me losing what I thought was the love of my life, to me like being sick, you know, or or having a disease or an illness or whatever the fuck it was. Like how, how did I, how did that happen overnight? How does that happen to anybody? And how does anybody overcome everything that's being thrown their way? At this young of an age, at this age where I haven't experienced anything, I haven't really seen anything, like it's just crazy. So my dad's having dinner when he had gotten home from work and he looks at me and obviously when you cry, your eyes are all, saggy and puffy and stuff and he looks at me and he was like what's wrong I was like nothing dad I was like I just been working a lot I've been working a lot and I'm just tired and he was like he's like no what's wrong and if you know me and my dad we're hella close that's why I'm a that's why I'm a really bad tomboy and I don't want to say nothing right so since he knows that me and my mom butt heads, he was like, Carmen, what did you do to Fabi? And my mom's like, nah, you know, I didn't do anything to her. She, she came from work. She said she was going to sleep, shower, take a nap. And then she was going to go to work again because she had a long day. 
And she's like, why has she been crying then? My mom's like, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't me, you know? 